Okay, people, so we have a new Guy Ritchie film. Now, yes, technically it came out a little bit earlier in the year, but it's just hit prime. So, you know, I figured I would give it a look. Which, you know, it's a weird one, right? Because I there are films that Guy Ritchie has made that I thought very good. Some have looked good, maybe story-wise, acting-wise, not the best. But there's usually something. There's usually something. Though I didn't go anywhere near King Arthur because that just looked atrocious. Um, <laughs> I did try and watch The Gentleman earlier this year, but it just irritated me. I mean, hmm. Anyway... You don't care. Uh, so, yeah, The Gentleman. It's actually based on a French film from, uh, gosh, I think it's 2004? 2004, called, um, well, Cash Truck or Le Courier. Or Le Cun no, not Le Courier, Le Convoyeur. Yes, and that was directed by Nicholas Bookerin. So, um, yes. So he's adapting that story along with Ivan Akinson and Marn Davis. So, yeah, they all worked on that screenplay. It's, again, produced by Richie Akinson and Bill Block. Cinematography is Alan Stewart. It is edited by James Herbert. Music is from Chris Bernstead. Um, we have a, a cast of Jason Statham. He plays Patrick Hill. There's a few AKAs. Right, he, he's known in the security firm as H, which, ugh. I just, like, look, I think a nickname should come naturally. And people that assign stupid nicknames are R-worded. Right? Or, like, you know, Patrick, you say Pat or something, or just... You know, you, you'd look at his abilities and give him, but H, ugh, I dated this chick once. Her name was Helen, and her one of her sisters called her H, and I was just, ugh, it just was like the dumbest thing, because I'm just like, Helen ain't a difficult thing to fucking say, right? So H, Hell, like you, there's no. I, you're not cutting anything out, really. It is just stupid. Ugh. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, you didn't need to know any of that. But uh, we also got Holt McClary. He plays Hayden Blair, aka Bullet. We have Josh Hartnett, who, um, yeah, Josh Hartnett's a weird one, right? Because it seems like you don't see him for ages, and then he suddenly pops up in something. You're like, oh, I wondered if he still acted. But, yeah, he plays Dave Hancock, a.k.a. Boy Sweat. Um, Jeffrey Donovan, he plays Jackson Ainsley. Uh, Scott Eastwood, he plays Jan. Um, he works with, uh, you know, Ainsley. Um, we've got uh, D. Buya Opari, who plays Brad. He again works with uh, Jackson. Laz Alonso plays Carlos. He's one of Jackson's crew. So is Sam, played by Raul Castillo, and Tom, played by Chris Riley. 
Um, Eddie Marson plays Terry Rossi, the manager of this security car firm. Um, we've got Nima Agla plays Dana Curtis. She also works at the security firm, along with Shirley, played by Tadag Murphy. Um, Alexander Babalua plays Stuart, another security guard. Um, Hollow, played by Ricky Williams. You know, um, yeah. Oh, Rob Delaney was an interesting one. He's the boss of the security company. He plays Blake Hales. And yeah, it was just like, huh, Rob Delaney. Wasn't expecting to see him in this film. You know, that was, uh, yeah. Uh, Alex Ferns, he plays Sticky Boy. He's another security guard. Um, we uh, then have... Doo -doo -doo. Uh, Andy Garcia, he plays FBI Agent King. Um, we have a few other FBI agents up in the piece. So Josh um, Cowdery plays FBI Agent Hubbard. Jason Wong plays FBI agent Oki. Um, we have El Eli Brown. He plays Dougie. Um, H's son. Right? And then we have um, members of a crew. Right? So um, those would be Mike. He's played by Daryl De Silva. Um, Moggy, played by Babs Olos Mokwin. Um, Brendan, played by Cameron Jack. I think. Yeah, I mean, oh. Kirsty, she's played by Lynn Renee. Um, and H's wife, ex wife, Jane, played by Eve Maitlin. So, the gist of the film, right? Mysterious and wild eyed. A new security guard for a cash truck surprises his co workers when he unleashes precision skills during a heist. The crew is left wondering who he is and where he came from. Soon the marksman's ultimate motive becomes clear as he takes dramatic and, in, and irreparable steps to settle a score. Um, I mean, it only becomes clear to the viewer because the film is structured in that way. <laughs> <laughs> like, no one else is like, oh, we get it. No, <laughs> that, that's not the case, people. It's not the case at all. Uh, so, yeah, it's an odd, like, it's structured in, like, these four parts, right? So the first part is uh, a dark spirit. Then we have got, um, it's it called Scorched Earth, right? Then we jump to Bad Animals, Bad. And it all climaxes with, um, ugh, I can't remember the last part is called. Oh, um... Liver, lungs, spleen, and heart. I mean, the last part you get with a reference from the at the very end. But other than that, yeah, the title is it's a bit like, hmm? like 
where did they come from? Yeah, it is a, I don't know, I don't know. But we start with a heist. We start with this heist situation and then it kind of plays from there. So we only, you only see an element of this heist, right? And then we get a guy yeah, going for a job. Going for a job at a security firm. You know, it's Stephen's character, obviously, people. And the thing with is, right, I think straight away you kind of work out, okay, something is all right here. You know, it, it's a, one of those films where you figure out everything. Like, you know exactly how it's going. Right, you can follow the beat. You be like, okay, so that's going to lead to that, and then obviously we're going to get this and blah blah blah, um, you know. But it was just he's trying to infiltrate, right? So he has this interview. But I will say, you wonder how he got the fucking job, right? There's the attitude in the interview. It's not. Uh, it's not a winning one, <laughs> you know. It, it's just the way it is. Be like, oh, oh, yeah. Uh, well, if you want to come, like, it's just I'm so nonchalant. <laughs> but you're just like, you know, what I mean, if you're trying to, it, you you would be acting it differently. You know what I mean? But so we see this, and then you, you know he's introduced to everyone, and you, it's an obvious thing, right? So, oh, so they're not going to like him at first, and then he ingratiates, and you know, what I mean, it's just it's just one of those. It's a, just a little bit played out, right? That whole scenario, and certain things happen that you're like, wait, what's he doing there? What's happening here? But that all becomes clear later on, right? Um, yeah. So we we have a heist, right? Well, first of all, it's the whole, oh, to qualify, you know, to pass your probation, you need to do this, this, and this. And then he does everything just enough to call it. And that in itself is a bit like, really? <laughs> because, you know, it, it's like to have the skill to only just pass means you are so fucking skilled. Right? You are so fucking skilled. And it's just a little bit like, oh, man, like, really? Come on. Because, you know, this heist goes down and we then see him jump into action. And, oh, he's not a terrible shot. He's great. He's perfect with the gun. And he can do all of this and do all of that and blah, blah, blah. You know? Which... As I said, look, it, it makes everyone look at him and be like, oh, you know, and his boss is a bit like, oh, I can't believe, oh. But again, because after that, right, we then get filled in on other information. So we see the first heist from a different viewpoint, right, more context. And we kind of are like, Oh, that happens because you know we are shown um Patrick with his son, right? Which doesn't really feel like a, a father, like you don't get father and son from them, <laughs> you know what I mean? It it just it's a little bit flat, that whole vibe, and it's only because of the way they're playing it, that it, you know, that you'd be like, okay, so they're related, right? Otherwise, it would just be like, hey, it's two people hanging out, you know what I mean? But we start off with them, 
and then it leads into the hikes, right? But one big thing that you're like, it's just why they're there, right? It, it, it's just why they're there that doesn't really make any sense. You know what I mean? And also, it, it, it just feels a little played, right? So we had this thing go down, and yeah, it, it, it's just like the more you learn, the more you're a bit like, hold the fuck on, hold the fuck on, because oh yeah, he he, we, you know, we find out his true nature, but it's like if you are like you're, we're meant to believe that you're this Don Dada. We're meant to believe this, right? I mean, and no one, know, like, so everyone would know, right? A British dude, head of this US outfit, right? That would be the talk of the criminal underworld. You know what I mean? They, they'd be, that would be a thing. But it's like, you know, oh, he's a crackpot shot. He's all of this. And he does, you know, it's just, it's too much. It is way too much for anyone to really believe it. You know what I mean? Um, and and this whole the whole fallout of the the situation and everything. Like, there's a scene with his ex wife, which again, it just feels a little forced. You know what I mean? Feels a little forced, which is just a bit like, uh, why is it there? The one thing I do love, like, the cinematography is very good. Like, the film looks slick as fuck, right? And in his office, he's got this table. Table is nice. <laughs> that was one of the things I, I was just like, that's a nice table. I would love that table. Oh, man. that the, it, it doesn't have normal kind of legs. It's got this, like, rounded thing. and it, It's a nice table, people. But yeah, like the you know we, we we see the film from like these different points of view, which all kind of lead back to this heist. We then see it from the robbers, you know, what I mean? and why they're doing it. But the 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 whole motivation, it's it's nothing new, right? It, it's nothing new, which. That's not an issue because there's only so many reasons people rob usually. But it's just, it's that played out concept, right? And, and you're just like, okay, but from what I know, now it's not to say soldiers aren't uh, overpaid or anything like that, but you know, once they're over, they're doing their thing, everything, their food to pay for and everything like that. So it's just that, you know, people often say, yeah, I can come home to this chunk of money because I don't have to spend anything. And they're paid. The wage itself is decent. Now, you might go, well, for someone who has to risk their life, they deserve more. But the wage itself is decent. You know, what I mean? so but so it's like this motivation. Always, it, it just feels a bit like uh, there needs to be more. There should be more, right? Convince me. But yeah, there's a lot of people in the film, but no one has any real depth, right? You don't really care about any of these people because we're not given anything right and and we have patrick on his mission to infiltrate and all of this and like there's a scene with dana that you're like it makes no sense like what it doesn't really make any sense you know there's all these, these things that happen and you're just like i but why would you play your hand there why would you do this thing how are you going to explain that you know what I mean? So we we have all of this go down. Um, 
and you know it, it, it culminates with an ending which you yeah you knew was gonna happen but right although although the story is thin as fuck right and you know the characters are as one-dimensional as a sheet of paper the action as i said look the cinematography is very good it's crisp you know there's a nice flow to it the action sequences are decent you know what i mean they're, they're, they're not bad at all but yeah it, it, it's just if we could have only of cared for some of the characters it it would have made it a bit more weighty when certain things happen. You know what I mean? I mean, because, like, you think of some of the shows that you love, right? Game of Thrones. I mean, one of the big things about that, everyone was mad invested in Sean Bean. And you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah, we're going to see what he's going to do now. And then at the end of the first season, he gets done. You're like, what? How the fuck did they? And you cared. And, you know, it's a similar thing with other shows. Like, you care about the characters. So when they bite it, you're like, no. But that wasn't a case with this. Just didn't really care about anyone. So if they, you know, caught it, you're like, eh. And also, it's just like, well, they've hardly been in it. So... Yeah, no, who gives a fuck, man? But one big thing, like, yeah, there's a lot of holes. But one of the robbers, he acts in a certain way. You know what I mean? He acts in a certain way at the start. And you think to yourself, why would they keep him on? Yeah, why would a keeper? He's a liability. He's clearly a liability. But he, he's kept, and you're just like, no, that wouldn't it wouldn't happen. When you learn the nature of the setup and what they're doing and everything and everything, it just wouldn't happen. You know? So it's a weird one. But if you like Guy Ritchie films, you will probably enjoy this, right? If you like a heist film, yeah, I think that, you know, this might meet it. I would say a, a really great heist, you should definitely check out um, Blonde Purple, right? Which we, you know, looked at a few weeks back and we spoke to the great Marcus Flemings about it. Um, so, yeah, go check that out, people. But yeah, I, I, you know, if you like, uh, you know, the whole heist setup, the security guard situation, then yeah, this may work for you. It may work for you. I did like the through music, you know, that was playing. Now, at, when it first happened, I was a bit like, eh, I'm not sure. But, you know, during the film, it definitely grew on me. I was like, yeah, no, I don't mind it. Don't mind it at all. But, um, yeah, there you go, people. Um, Wrath of Man, it is now on a prime video, so you can watch it at your pleasure.